And wisdom consists in accepting things and transforming them by loving them. And then it's a process of transformation. Because philosophy without theology is simply wrong or just uh, handicapped. All the fundamental questions are theological questions. I think that the challenge of our present day culture, times, times, is to learn, to gather, to synthesize, and to learn the last six to eight thousand years of human history. You studied uh, science, chemistry, philosophy, and th theology. Yes, well, which is. Again, it was not pre-planned, not pre-programmed, not set in any software, but it came down. My father had a chemical factory, so I was the eldest of the family. The normal, I was just sufficiently uh, clever to study science or humanity or anything. Uh, so I always hesitate because I don't make any decision in my life. That is, but people don't understand. You don't make decisions. No. How do things because I'm silly. happen to you? Probably, <laughs> or, or, or stupid. I, really, I don't make decisions. And even for small little decisions, are you going to take that or that? It's to me uh, a difficult thing, because if I want to make the intellect, I know 10,000 reasons for and 10,000 reasons against. So what I'm going to do, let things happen according to, to your heart or instinct or whatever. The difficulty is that if, if your heart is not pure, then you may take the wrong decision. <laughs> so my family had this chemical factory. It was normal. And I, they didn't oblige me. But being you know, good enough in both science and humanity, I said, well, study science, which I do not regret seven long years to get in touch with matter, to know matter in, intimately. Always, I had always interest in, in studying more than that, not less. You were And to right. study philosophy. How did you uh, come to study philosophy then? Well, because of that kind of trend of mine, <laughs> you want. I was asking always all the time the wrong questions for the chemist. <laughs> and I had always interest. In philosophy, as I understand philosophy, which is not just uh, playing football with uh, concepts, but trying to discover by all the means you have at hand the meaning of your life. What is all that about? So asking, I think the wrong questions or asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And then you discover that many other people have thought about these things before you. And so you, you, you come to know the wisdom of the, of the elders, of the ancestors. And that is another way of saying philosophy. Once you are in the grill, no, the question of philosophy is very the spirit leads me to theology because philosophy without theology is simply wrong or just uh, handicapped all the fundamental questions are theological questions The Western mind got obsessed by certainty. By reason? By certainty. I, I want to be sure. And from certainty, you got to security. And from the car certainty, you got to the state security that unless I have an atomic bomb, I cannot be secure. It's, it's a whole process. And theology is, has been then specialized. And theology without philosophy, what is that? kind of red line with the divine, which is superstition. About this uh, uh, security, you say somewhere that religion always has to have this sense of, of insecurity and doubt that this is... Un un unless uh, you are so foolish to thinking that you are 
the master of yourself, the, the, the creator of the world, the super dictator of the entire thing that you can walk on life. I think we lack much more, I would say now, a feminine dimension of accepting things, being marvelous in things, of falling in love. You know that I, I make this pun, philosophy is much more the wisdom of love than the love of wisdom. And both need to go together. Because knowledge without love is simply calculus and cuts and destroys you. And love without knowledge is simply sentimentalism. And you are then, after a while, totally disenchanted and doesn't last. To bring the two together, or rather, more than the bring to it, to discover that within me there is no separation. And precisely uh, enlightenment has separated the both. And that has led even to modern science, for instance, which make us believe that one can know without loving. That you can be a great scientist being a crooked person and a rascal which is not the case by through knowledge. We have disentangled again ethics from metaphysics, from religion. And the ethics means to follow certain. And I, I fully understand people react against. We are free. I mean, that is the greatest human dignity, freedom. Aren't there dangers too in this freedom? Obviously. So. The greatest danger is life. You will die. More than that. The greatest danger is abuse of freedom. Indeed. Yes, I uh, <clears throat> I remember that uh, somebody saying that that a lot of people can't stand the freedom and that they are ah. just willing to give it away. Uh, that somebody else tells them what to do. Can we handle our freedom as human beings? Well, we can, but first, for those people in power, it's uncomfortable. Why now in Spain, for instance, they try, and all of Europe, the same thing, to avoid the study of philosophy and even to dismiss it from the, the second uh, the curriculum. Curriculum. But is it done consciously? I am very much afraid, and I suspect that it's done consciously. We want robots, not people who think, who can who can question our questions, and then the powers that be from multinational, from economic parts, etc., et will embarrass us. Indeed, I don't believe any longer in the kind of innocence. Isn't the trend no? of the no? But isn't it that? People like um, to study economics, want to have a career, and therefore they're not interested in philosophy. Isn't that the reason you turn it around? <laughs> I turn it around completely because we are being manipulated. You know, the second industry, I mean, our present situation is intrinsically unjust. Where does the world spend more money? Arms. Second, propaganda. Third, Tourism. Yet the three biggest money markets. We call it defense, of course. Mm -hmm. Because we want we, because we are this obsession of security. If I if I'm not more powerful than you, I will feel threatened. And when Bacon began to say that knowledge is power, then, then we, we developed that something which is not knowledge, but something which gives power. Salary is the modern form of slavery. Because they give you at the end of the month a check, with which you can do anything. But meanwhile, five days of the week, the eight hours of the day, you work for me and whatever, don't ask. And if you like it or don't like it, doesn't matter. And if you do something, it doesn't come out of your being if you don't like. And obviously, 
depression, an ulcer for the five years, uh, a divorce after five years, because you, your nerves are, you, you, you live on edge, etc., etc. And then you take a pill, another thing, etc. Et and we create this artificial world in which we live. Are you suggesting that the study of philosophy and the theology is dangerous then? Indeed. Indeed. Threatens the status quo. Asks the embarrassing questions. Uh, demolishes and undermines the certainties. Asking wrong wives. And wants to get your own freedom. And we prefer just Catholic. Obedience, which is the opposite. You obey. What means obedience? The very word means the wisdom of the word. Obedience means audire, means to listen. To listen to whom? To you? Or to listen to the voice of my, the, the voice of my conscience? Of, this, of, of, of the language of the world? <coughs> to listen to the, like the sky and the stars? The, the, the old scholastics already said that the first world, the first book, the book of nature. The second book, said the Christians, is the Bible. <laughs> and the third book is that what people that we write, what they always write. That, that, that's interesting, uninteresting, but very little. We have lost the awareness of the dignity of the person. Because if I kill you, I wound myself also. If you disturb me, is that I am also disturbed. And I disturb you. It's this interrelationship of everything with everything. From the stars to God to all the divine and, 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 and the body and the soul. And then you begin to discover that you are not the proprietor of your being. But you live. Because you live because you have been invited to the banquet of life. For time being, all right. For the being in time. And, 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 and you enjoy it. That this implies discipline, hassles. All the better. Because the, these are little obstacles which allow you to realize yourself. The old Kant, I mean, I'm not against philosophers also, <laughs> says this beautiful image. If the doors would think, they will curse the air which offers resistance to their wings. <laughs> <laughs> and without that, we not fly. <laughs> so, but we are perhaps as stupid as the doors. Just cursing the resistances, which are the very means by which we can fly. We can be ourselves. It's not more dangerous. It is 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 like democracy, World Bank, common market, uh, nation states, uh, technology, science, other things, and non-negotiable. That's a me more subtle fundamentalism. That our foundation, because it's, it's more dangerous, more subtle, and, and, and better in a certain way, indeed than a silly fundamentalism of a, of a, of a, of a fanatic uh, world. And nevertheless, why do you call these, for instance, democracy? Why do oh, you yes, democracy can be fundamentalism. And in the name of democracy have been made as many crimes as in the name of God. So everything which has no reflective power, is that it? Everything, do you call that fundamentalism? Everything which is an absolute which is a non-negotiable thing, 
which is something which and and I have to respect that you have your foundations. But you have also to respect that I have a, other type of foundations. That that's the, the meaning of pluralism. Well, I think you've uh, half answered the letter. It's time to pass the baton from Tessa Bielecki. So thank you, dear friend and a great person. And uh, she wrote a question for you. Which I may read. Yes. A question of Mother Bielecki. I repeat it. Uh, dear yes. friend. Dear Father Ramon, I know that you're critical of the institutional church, uh, as I am myself, but isn't the institutional element an integral part of religion, as Baron von Hugel said? So how can we do without it? And what would a reformed or a transformed institutional church look like? A reformed. Or transformed. Or a reform or transform institution look like? Well, if this question merits uh, an answer, uh, organism and organization. You are an organism. If I pinch you, you, your finger, well, your brains react. If I say a nice word, even you smile. If I, uh, something, you are an organism in which everything is connected. And as I was saying before, without elaborating much, when we spoke of the body and body and soul, the organism is the unity between, within everything which is organically connected, even with the soul. And I uh, feel that I have to lift up the, the, my arm and I lift it up. By, by, by just because it's an organism. An organism needs life, needs a soul. An organization needs a constitution, a board of directors, and money. <laughs> and there is this danger to convert the, ins, the organism, which is a living thing. A plant is an organism. The cosmos is an the earth is an organism. The cosmos is an organism. The entire world is an organism, the entire universe, into an organization. An organization has not a life of its own. It has to justify, because we create money, health, or promote tourism, or whatever it is. It has to get a constitution, a board of directors, and money. Well, a means to realize it. And here begins the degeneration of living organisms, like the church, for instance. The church is a living organism. And even inside those books of theology, which you said I studied, they say you the, the, the soul of the church is the Holy Spirit. And the soul is the spirit. That spirit, which we are still in the Pentecostal week, Pentecost week, uh, permeates everything, in everything. Everything is divine, everything is spiritual, everything is the Holy Spirit. In, 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 in different ways, indeed. Like the three, the other the three are one and, and not one, and, and infinitely different, or infinitely different. So the institutions have a life of their own. The church is an institution and has to be an institution and needs to be an institution. Uh, does not need to be an you know, uh, <coughs> organization. It's an organism, a living organism. But the trouble, let me put it this way, the trouble lies by us. If I worship the, the church as, as more than an institution, then I am wrong. I had a friend of mine, uh, in the old Spanish cavalier general in the army. To me, the army now is obsolete. The army is one of the worst things in the world, etc., etc. Yet, yeah, that was a real gentleman. 
and full of enthusiasm to the army in the still traditional cavalry-esque sense of what it means to be a cavalier. <clears throat> and he said, or said to me when speak, you see, the trouble with the army, with tra the trouble with the military, with the military, is that we need to recruit from the civils. <laughs> The trouble with the church is <laughs> <laughs> you that know, they have to recruit the people from this and you cannot worship the church as an institution, as an institution where an absolute. <laughs> so it is easy to criticize the others. If you take the, the church is an institution, indeed, and it's nice even. But if you think that the institution is the thing, who is to blame? Oh, a little the institution, went, but it's to blame us. Don't take the institution, I should say, too seriously, but seriously, take it as, as, as it is. A waste of traffic, or loss of traffic, or loss of, of, of organizing things, which is, is needed. I mean, the energy leads nowhere. Chaos is the, uh, mutual destruction. But if we begin to think, and Christians should know fairly well, that the Sabbath is made for men and men for the Sabbath, that the, 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 the freedom of the children of God means the freedom of the children of God means freedom and not just blind uh, discipline. You see, if I criticize uh, the power of the clergy or bishop, which I do, there's one way to rent in, in, on, on all aspects the power powers. That is? that is not recognizing it. Uh, I frighten you. And, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. If I, uh, you kill me, you send me to hell, whatever it is. If I am not frightened, all your power on me is gone. You can menace me, you can torture, but if I am not frightened, what is your power? So if we are not afraid, and once again, what that risen man said, in all reported manifestations of the risen Christ, except one, his greetings, two, only two things are his message. Peace be with you, don't be afraid. And uh, the whole revolution of Christ was that he dared to challenge the very essence of his own tradition, the law, the Torah. I'm convinced, more and more convinced, that when the Jews, the Sanhedrin, condemned Jesus, it was not because the Jews were bad. It was not because they were uh, ambitious and bad fellows, these bad Jews, but the opposite. They want to save that man was non-violent, who was so tolerant, uh, the zealots and the non-zealots and the right and the left and, 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 and the adulterers and everybody. Only one thing he could not tolerate. Only one thing, hypocrisy. All the rest, hypocrisy not because it destroys itself. Be what you are, you see. I'm not what I am, I'm just uh, putting on. I'm putting on. That's what I would say to my yeah. okay. Tessa. You say that the crisis we are in is not the crisis of any particular civilization, but it's more in general. What do you mean by that? Yes. Precisely because I am an optimist, and I believe that our times, not because are our times, uh, although it happens that we live in, it, in them, have a very important role to play and a function to perform. Because we have reached geographically, historically, the limits of the earth. And 
in a certain way, uh, we have a certain possibility of seeing that planet. I think that the challenge of our times is not whether the next American president is going to be Democrat or Republican, or the European Union is going to have Euro or Euro, uh, or uh, Japan is going to beat the dragons of Asia, uh, Hong Kong or Singapore. But precisely because our present day is different from all the others, literature, philosophy, uh, wisdom have existed since thousands of years, but that we fly at thousand kilometers per hour or speak uh, in a minute or and say nothing with somebody who is not here, etc., etc. I think that the challenge of our present day culture, times, times, is to learn to gather to see the ducks and to learn the last six to eight thousand years of the history. The historical period, if we call it prehistory. And the historical period is characterized by this worship, worship of time. Of time. Time and of linear time. We have to work with the future. Young man, you have to think in your future. Uh, you citizens, we have to create, create England, Spain, whatever. The idea of the empire is to, for the future, the new generations, the youth, and education, uh, is, uh, are going to have a better future, a brighter future, it's living for the future. So what do you suggest? Yes. Uh, living for the future, Yes. Uh, so right. right. So just violent seed, a bellicose uh, ignition point. Because for the future, the most horrible things have made been made in the history. But our task is to pass from a culture of war to a culture of peace. A culture of war means that I'm right or wrong and we are the conquerors, the victors, which have in the history. Hammurabi and all the times is, is always the victor against the fool. The culture of war. Uh, I have even, even a, 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 we use our language as a weapon to convince you to defeat you. So we are be beginning to become aware that this way of beating the other, being back in the other, exporting your input, being richer than you, etc., etc., has its limits and does not deliver the goods. The goods of a good life, of a peaceful existence, of real progress, if you want, the very progress betrays progress. What are you going to? Time is not an arrow. Not even a circle. And more and more people are beginning to discover that neither riches, nor a great empire, nor a great uh, civilization, knowledge, makes us more human and happier. Never in the world has had so much suffering and, and, and oppression and man-made injustice as, as now. That we have all means, all means. To alleviate the hunger, to alleviate the... the and they want to do it. Because uh, uh, the people in power are monsters, no. Because that civilization, that system, that culture, that myth, it is impossible. So we need a new picture of the world. Well, we need 
to destroy all pictures and have the guts to act without a model. What is the role of the church or religion in the 21st century? Uh -huh. I have a whole theory, which I have even written down, that Christendom is practically dead, Christianity is dying, and Christianness is emerging. Christendom was a genial conception of the totality of human being. Christian culture, Christian cathedrals, Christian right, Christian law, Christian prisons, Christian inquisitions, Christian crusades, Christian wars, good bad, Christian culture. Christendom, which is this genial conception, was made Europe, is practically dead, except in the minds of few people, and Christian nurse is emerging. You speak to young generations of the Council of Chalcedon, of, of the dogma of even the most of the Christian dogmas. They may hear you, but the body of Christians is becoming more and more conscious that the mission of Christ was not a big institution, was not to control and to administrate, not even sacraments, but to be a living symbol of something which speaks from within your heart, and that if there is any law that is written in your heart and not in any document.